So when dealing with stoichiometry problems, you need a periodic table. Thank you very much. You need a um, you need a periodic table. I would say you would also would like a flow chart of some sort. I'm going to show you guys how to use this. Uh, and then you also need balanced equations. So I already balanced this equation here for you guys. Two aluminum plus three chlorine is going to give us two aluminum chlorides. You need to know that anything that deals with grams is going to require the molar mass of that element or compound. All right, and this was just a quick question. Two moles of aluminum need to react with three full moles of chlorine to give us a complete two moles of aluminum chloride. Now here, we need to figure out what is substance A, what is substance B, and like what we're given, what we're looking for. Pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time, whatever we're given here with the number, all right, that is going to be substance A. So 2.5 moles of aluminum. That is going to be what we call substance A. What are we looking for? We're looking for grams of substance B. So this is where the chart comes in. You're always either going to start in one of these two positions. Because right? we're always going to be going from substance A to substance B. That's part of what stoichiometry is. Otherwise, it's just figuring out, oh, if I have two moles of something times it by the mole mass, that's how many grams I got. All right. This is going to be how much of something I'm using or reacting with can or do I need or is going to be produced from this. So you're always going to be starting here. Well, we started or are starting with moles of A. So we would be starting in this position here, moles. So that's why we're going to put it like this in the starting spot. Now these pieces here, uh, you know what I should have added, this actually should be, we should write this. You guys want to add that in right now? Okay, so this will be your first conversion. And then this will be one mole of substance B over the molar mass of B. This will be one mole of A over the molar mass of A. Okay. So depending upon whether you're given mass to start with or moles to start with will be depending upon where you place it. So we're always going from left to right because we got to go from moles of substance A to moles or mass of substance B or mass of A to moles of B or mass to mass. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we need to get to grams of B. So mass is your grams. So that means I have to use this conversion right here and then this conversion right here. So to go from moles of A to the next step, we got to do this. Moles of substance B. What was substance B? Excuse me, Jack, can you see my face yeah. picture for dismissal, please? Yep. Yep. Thanks so much. Yep. Okay. Okay. Jesus. All right. So, guys, what we would then have to do, right, moles of substance B was aluminum chloride. And then moles of substance A would be AL. Moles of substance A would be AL. Now, where it says this right here, these numbers, what do they come from? They come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. So in the balanced equation that I gave you guys up top, you have 2 as the number of moles of aluminum in the beginning. And then you have 2 moles of aluminum chloride here. All right, so now you're good with this part. But if I finish the problem right here, moles of aluminum cancel, I would be left with moles of aluminum chloride. They didn't want that. They wanted grams. 
So I have to continue to get to this spot here. So that tells me I need to use the conversion of one mole of substance B. Again, substance B is aluminum chloride. Over the molar mass of that substance. Okay, so that's where we got to do a little side quest here. We got to figure out what molar mass of aluminum chloride is. So aluminum, looking on using our periodic tables, 26.98 and chlorine is 35.45. So one aluminum, 26.98 plus chlorine is 35.45. But we have how many? So we got to do times three. Throw that into a calculator. 35.45 times 3 plus your 26.98. And you're going to get 130.33. And that should be how many grams are in one mole of your aluminum chloride. And that number goes there, 130.33 grams of aluminum chloride. So now we look, moles of aluminum on top and bottom cancel out, up, yep, good job. Totally. Oh, well, you know what? I'm glad we did it. I'm glad I did it. So does this work? Moles on top, grams on bottom. Do they cancel out? No. So we would be left with moles of aluminum squared over grams. Definitely not what we want. So this conversion should technically be flipped. So let's change that here. Let's change that. We want molar mass of B over one mole of B. And then this one, but this one stays put. This one would be fine. But if we want to just rewrite it all up so it looks all kind of the same. All right, so cool. We looked at this. We figured out, okay, there's a slight thing. So this is a good thing, guys, because this will help you if you wind up realizing, like, wait a minute. In order to move on, I need to basically have the unit on top and another unit just like that on bottom for them to cancel out. So this conversion should have been flipped. We should have done molar mass of B on top over one mole. So we just got to fix that real quick. We got to put the 130.33, and we call it grams of this. And we just put one mole. Of your ALCL3 on bottom. Okay, now let's look. Moles of aluminum cancel and moles of aluminum chloride cancel. So the only thing that you're going to be left with is in grams of aluminum chloride. Excellent. So that is going to work. Uh, when finding this, unless I, unless I typed it in wrong, 35.45 times 3 plus 26.98. Okay, that was a really good... Hey, I'm glad we're paying attention. Must have accidentally typed in just 4 instead of the 45. I didn't... I thought you were asking, is it... I apologize. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't understand. I didn't, I didn't understand what you... what we're saying. All right. So... 
Great. Um, I'm glad you guys are, are up and double checking here. So with this though, find the molar mass. Make sure you're careful with that. All right. Um, we have our mole ratio, which comes from the balance equation. So that is this middle section here. And now we have the correct molar mass. So what do we do now? Now you multiply everything on top. So 2.5 times 2 times the 133.3. So 133.3 times 2 times the 2.5. 666.65 so you multiply everything on top and then divide by everything on bottom so now we got to divide this by 2 and then well we don't need to divide by 1 because the 1 isn't going to affect it and so that is going to be what you're dealing with so we have to make sure we have the balance equation find the molar mass when needed um, Make sure that the units, all right, you have one of the units on top and one of them on bottom, so cancel out, all right? So we looked at, we learned that the hard way right there. We had to do a little race move. Uh, double check your molar masses. Thank God you guys did. Otherwise, our answer would be slightly off. Uh, and then now we multiply everything on top and divide by what's on bottom. So you should have a full answer here of 333.5. 325, and then the units will be in grams of aluminum chloride. So the reason why this is good, or this problem is good, because once you find the molar mass for one of the elements or compounds, because this is asking multiple questions about the same equation, you already have the molar mass found for aluminum chloride already, so that's kind of super nice. Yes? Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to look at this next one here. So can you guys tell me what is given and what are we looking for? Yes? Moles of Cl2. What is that? Is that going to be substance A or B? Good. All right, what is substance A? It's pretty much to do with the number. Okay, so 12.3 grams. That's A. Moles of this is what we want. That's B. So the first one, we went from moles of A to mass of B. What are we going to be doing now? We're going to be going from, are we starting in grams of substance A or, or moles of substance A? Mass. All right, so we're starting with grams. So we're going to have 12.3 grams of aluminum chloride. Please be writing along, guys. So since we're starting with grams, we're here. What do we want? Do we want mass of substance B or moles of substance B? Moles. So that means we want to finish here. So these two pieces are the conversions that you need to make. All right, and then and it's pretty much it's straightforward from there. All right, so let's take a look. One mole of substance A has to go on top. So A was the aluminum chloride. So one mole of aluminum chloride on top over the molar mass of substance A. Well, guess what? We found that in the problem above, so that saves us a, a little bit of time. 133.33 grams aluminum chloride. So that was my first conversion that I needed to make. That was the first conversion that was needed to be or needed to be made. The second conversion would be this guy. So moles of substance B. What was substance B again? Cl2. And moles of substance A has to go on bottom. Substance A was aluminum chloride. Now, when it says these numbers, where do these numbers come from? The coefficients in the balanced equation. Where is the balanced equation? It's all the way back up at the top. So what is the coefficient in front of Cl? Three. So that is where the number three is going to come. 
And then what is the coefficient in front of the aluminum chloride? Two. And that, when we finish, let's see, we'll, can't, let's look at the the crisscross method here or the dimensional analysis method or factor label, however it's called. We have grams of aluminum chloride on top and on bottom, so that's good. They get to cancel. Moles of aluminum chloride on top and on bottom. Cancel. So the what we're going to finish at is moles of chlorine, which is what we wanted. So what do we do? Now we just multiply everything on top and then divide by what's on bottom. So how I type this, guys, into my calculator. I go 12.3. You don't need to multiply or divide by ones times three. I get this number. And then I'm going to divide separately. I'm going to divide by 133.33. Then I hit equals. And then I divide again by whatever else is on bottom, two. And when you get this, you can round it to three or two decimals. I'm going to use, I'm going to leave it at three. If you put it as 0.14, you're fine. If you left it at 0.138, you're also good. I don't care about sig figs, so that's just fine for me. If it was sig figs, you would use this number here. And then the unit, so I'm just going to write this. Moles of Cl2. All right. Again. What are we given? What is substance A? Um, Three point four moles, and what is it of? Okay, so what was what is chlorine in the equation? Well, in the equation, what would I use? Am I using A, Cl two? It has to be Cl two. So I'm just going to write this over here, Cl2. And then what do they want or what are we looking for? Grams of aluminum, which would be B. And obviously, hopefully, we all know that it's Al. Now, the reason why, guys, I needed you to write Cl2 instead of just Cl is because Cl is not just by itself in the equation. But the Cl2 is. Why? Because chlorine is one of those diatomic molecules, like the Hofbrinkel crew. All right, so let's set it up. Where am I going to start? Am I starting in mass of substance A or moles of substance A? Moles. So basically, that's going to go in the starting block. So we're all going to write this, 3.4 moles Cl2. That's your starting piece. And what do we want? Do we want moles of substance B or mass of substance B? Mass. We want mass. So guess what? you got to use this conversion and this conversion. So first conversion, moles of substance B on top. Blank moles of what do we – all right, so it's going to be AL because that's substance B. And blank moles of substance A has to be Cl2. We need the coefficients from the balance equation, so let's bring it back up. AL should be 2 and CL2 should be 3. So now we're done with this conversion. And what is my last conversion going to have to be? Moles of substance B on bottom, one mole of it. So one mole of AL over the molar mass of that substance. Okay, so side quest. AL. That's awesome because since it's not a compound, I literally – and there's no subscript. I'm literally just looking at what its molar mass is on your periodic table. So it's going to be 26.98 grams. Okay, let's 
double look and see if everything cancels out and balances properly like we need it to. Mm-hmm. What is what? Mm-hmm. So why they both off? These? Yeah. Um, because substance B, right, we need to make sure everything, the things that we don't want have to cancel. So that's why we have moles of Cl2 here and here. And then moles of aluminum on top and moles on bottom to leave us in our final thing that we wanted, grams of aluminum. Okay, so what would I do in my calculator? So in the calculator, I'm going to be doing 3.4 times 2 times 26.98 equals. And then I'm going to divide by what's on bottom. What's on bottom? Just the 3 because we don't need the 1. And so my final answer here is going to be 61. And this one, I'll round to two decimals, 61 point, we'll leave it at 0.15. And that will be in grams of aluminum. So that's all the ones that we're going to kind of deal with today. You're going to basically be going, huh? We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. But um, my my main point is, um, so you guys are either going to be just today. You got to figure out what you're given, right, and where you need to start. So if I'm given moles of something, I start here, and if I want mass of the other thing, I got to use these two conversions. If they said I'm given mass of substance A and they want moles of substance B, then these are the two conversions that I would use. And then tomorrow we're going to look at mass to mass problems, which is going to go from mass of this to mass of this, where you use all three conversions. All right, so the conversion, setting it up is easy. The only real pain in the ass is making sure you have the right um, molar mass for them. All right, so you guys tr want to try E on your own, or you want to do that one together? Okay, so let's, we can take one more look at these. These, okay, okay. Seventeen grams of aluminum react to figure out how many moles of aluminum chloride would be produced. So seventeen grams of aluminum. That is substance A. How you doing? How many moles of aluminum chloride? That is going to be B. So what am I where am I starting, guys? Am I starting in mass of A or moles of A? No. Mass because I'm given grams. So if you want to add that here, grams, that's cool. So 17 grams of aluminum means we start here. And what do they want? Moles of substance B. So that means we're only using these two conversions. All right, bet. So take what you're given, put it in the starting position. 17 grams. Aluminum is just Al. So I know I need this conversion and this conversion. One mole of aluminum. All right, so I need the molar mass of aluminum. Well, if it's by itself, again, we just use that in the problem above. You, If it's an element by itself and no subscripts, you just use whatever it says in the periodic table. That was the 26.98 grams of Al. Okay, so that's my first conversion. My second conversion, moles of substance B. What was my substance B again? Aluminum chloride. So I look back up the I look back up at the equation or the formula, and that says AlCl3 and moles of substance A on bottom. So that's simple. That's just moles of aluminum. These numbers, where do they come from? The coefficients of the balanced equation. So the balanced equation, coefficient of aluminum chloride is 2. Coefficient of aluminum is 2. So this is going to be a 2, and this is going to be a 2. Grams of aluminum cancel, 
and moles of aluminum cancel, leaving us in the desired unit of moles of aluminum chloride. And then we just got to type this in to the calculator. And we're going to do 17 times 2 equals, then divide by the 26.98, and then divide again by 2, and we're going to be left with 0 0.63. And what would my unit be? of aluminum chloride. Okay. And that's that's pretty much it. So that's what we're going to be working on. All right, on the back side. Um, so let's let's get to getting. Correct.